something that a lot of beginners always ask us, like, you know, what deck should I choose? What deck is right for me? How do I decide? They expect us to just be able to answer that for them. Well, technically, that's what we'll be doing today. So we have five major points that we're going to sort of suggest you consider when you're building a deck or deciding which one to play. You because just nothing, can't pull random decks. Yeah, nothing's worse than actually playing a deck that's just kind of not right for you. Yeah. So, uh, Number one. Yes. Do you like to use fast-moving, like, combo-y decks? Yeah, so these are the decks that, you know, you'll see a lot of competitive players use sometimes. Like, they're fast, they make a crazy big board, or they OTK people, <coughs> or they're just generally very aggressive. Lots of damage, lots of monsters. Right now, a good example is Spirals and Goki. Yeah, they, you know, loads of long combos. Extra linking you, <laughs> the crazy the nutty stuff. Other examples? Yeah, there's stuff like Mermails, you know, those are more of a like lower tier deck. Gym Knights. Even more lower tier, Triple Ds. World Chalice, very strong combo oh, deck. Oh, such a combo deck. That's all combo, nothing else. Yeah, so, you know, if you're the type of player who likes to kind of play fast and likes to like intricate do all plays. that. Yeah, these are the decks that are right for you. They have the strength of, of course, being able to close games out really quickly and a lot of times your opponent's just going to scoop when you get mid-combo. Yeah, they can put a lot of pressure on the board, and that's something that I think draws a lot of people to them. It's like playing Yu-Gi-Oh! on the fast lane. But they're not without their weaknesses. Yeah, uh, combo decks, despite being very fast, sometimes suffer from weaknesses like being really prone to disruption. Yeah, uh, Droll and Lock will shut down just about any combo deck. Yeah, all your modern combo decks lose to, you know, <coughs> that. Floodgate cards tend to be their bane. Ah, pfft. They, they can be slow to start up. Yeah, and... Or fragile on start up. Yeah, I think that's a probably better way to put it, is they're, they're very prone to disruption, and sometimes they have a tough time recovering if their combos go wrong. Because they're very resource intensive, and they don't always have a way to get in the pack. Yeah, they get hit by, like, you know, Raigeki, Ross, Sphere Mode, evenly matched, like something that just breaks their board, even that well-placed Torrential Tribute, and they might not have the resources to really, you know, make it back. And so for that reason, I think that these are decks that are fun, but you have to kind of realize you're using a glass cannon sometimes. That's a good way of putting it. These are, kind of, these are glass cannon decks. And the last point about them that's kind of a weakness, although you can mitigate this eventually, is you have to be able to memorize these combos. Yeah, the better you can read those bad boys off, the more time efficient it is. Right. And the more re kind of ready you are to uh, adapt to, like, interruption. Right, because, you know, there have been so many cases in competitive events of people actually choosing not to use a certain intricate combo deck just because they're afraid they'll make a mistake. And with these combo decks, you know, doing <laughs> anything in the wrong order, and nowadays, like, Link Monsters... Yeah, Master Rule 4. Putting anything in the wrong column, even, like, can change entire combos. And it might be, like, the end. I mean, you might not be able to continue if you do something wrong Because it can make the whole difference between a, a strong, unbreakable board to an extremely fragile kind of yeah, waste weak, of time. You know, and so that's kind of the thing, you know, if you like playing fast Yu-Gi-Oh, crazy Yu-Gi-Oh, winning quickly, then combo decks are great, you know, but... You also might want to play a slower paced game, a controlly type game. Yeah, there are decks that are kind of the opposite of combo decks. They're more about, you know, controlling the pace, slowing your opponent down. To your own pace. Right, and, you know, maybe even locking them down entirely. Yeah, just don't let them play. I think the most <laughs> uh, prevalent example right now would be Altergeist. Ah, uh, yeah. Do very, they slow it down? Very trap intensive deck. Um, uh, True Dracos. True Dracos. That's another good one. Paleo. 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 Yeah, a lot of people don't. You're care at a for, crawl. <laughs> not care for Paleozoics. And I mean, there are others too. Um, anti meta strategies in general tend to use these types of like. It might be lots of negations, it might be lots of trap cards. There are cards made for this. Look at Inspect Border. Yeah, and it might just be where like your opponent doesn't get to do their plays without having to navigate just this minefield of disruption and, and all that. A lot of people like having that type of control over their opponent. If you want, kind of want to see your opponent squirm, make it uncomfortable for them to play against you. Perfect deck for you masochists out there. Sadists. Yes. <laughs> Sadists. Masochists too. The mask is the one who likes playing against it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, these decks aren't without their weaknesses, of course. Um, I would say the biggest weakness, really, is that they are still slow to start. Because they kind of have to be by the way they're designed. And they don't make the best comeback plays. If their strategies kind of go wrong, 
you're sometimes left with just a bunch of like dead trap cards. What recovery? Yeah, you can get rushed down really easily with these decks. These decks also do not like going second. Yeah. And there's a good chance you will. So. They, yeah, if their opponent knows. They don't like going second, they don't like spell and trap removal usually. Yeah, that just takes cards off the board, and, and we, so like we said, you don't really recover very well. So. Those in-phase twin twisters, those in-phase heavy storm dusters. And unlike combo decks, they also don't usually have as much surge power. You know, whereas a combo deck gets to run like all these combo starters, sometimes these decks, what you draw in your opening hand is... <laughs> that, that's the whole game. That's what you get, you know. I, I remember playing the anti-meta deck like with you know barrier statues and fossil dyna and spec border it's all the all that stuff and it's like you know triple card demise and stuff but whatever i drew if that wasn't going to win me the matchup i didn't get to search the floodgates traps aren't really searchable right golly and so for decks like that that's sometimes a big bit of a big like turn off for me it's like i don't like for the game to feel like it's just sometimes out of my hands if i draw a bad hand it just sucks but there is a middle ground to uh, these first two points. There is. <laughs> <laughs> if you like, you could also play ramp decks. Yes. Like ramp decks, they like to build up their resources over time and then just kind of explode. Yeah, overwhelm the opponent. They either they can they, they can do one of two things. They can get really aggressive and just beat down your opponent, or they get really controlling and just lock them down. Yeah, I think a really good example of this right now is Burning Abyss. Um, it's a deck that, you know, it can float for a really long time, it can disrupt your opponent with a lot of different cards, and, you know, the longer the game goes, the more Burning Abyss are able to kind of get in their groove, get their loops going with Dante and Beatrice and stuff like that, and it gets harder and harder to deal with them. Other examples are like, uh, Pendulums. Yeah, I feel like Pendulums right now really fit into that category. Dinos. ABCs, I know it's a popular one. Yeah. And Infernoids. Uh, Infernoids. Yeah, these decks that... They're kind of jack of all trades, master of none in some sense. Yeah, they they really are a middle ground, but but even rap decks, you know, they have their own their own weaknesses. Yeah, because the strategy kind of involves like picking up resources as the game goes along. If you get rushed down early on, you yeah. might not be able to like fight that quickly. Uh, interruption. Uh, you you tend to start off with a pre, with a pretty fragile board to start. Mm hmm. So that can just interrupt the entire game, but if you can, if you if it doesn't happen, well, you can hit him with everything. Yeah, and so those are kind of the three main types of decks in Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> you could probably break it down further, but for simplicity's sake, yeah, that's kind of what three. we're going with. There are some other points to consider, though. Yeah. First and foremost, what are your personal preferences? What do you like to play? Because there's a lot in Yu-Gi-Oh. To be completely honest, I mean, if you like legacy decks. Right? Blue Eyes, Red Eyes, Dark Magician, Tunes, you know, there's plenty of stuff like that. And Konami keeps making more of those. Maybe you like, you know, fusion decks. There's a lot of different kinds of fusion decks. You play Preda Plants, Gem Knights, Luna Lights, or, you know, Shadals, Heroes. For, uh, what are they called? The ones that didn't get patchwork. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, like, in addition to that, like, maybe you like zombies. You could play vampires. You can play Vendred. Or maybe you like. Plants, and you know, you could play Aromages. Yeah, maybe you like plants. <laughs> so there's like all kinds of different, you know, options for you. And I think that that's something that people should keep in mind too. Play the deck that you want to play. Yeah, at the end of the day. Uh, play what interests you. Yeah, because I mean, anything else, you're probably just going to stop. Right. And the last point, and one that we always have to reiterate in like every video, right? Yeah. Your intent and your budget. Yeah. So, so what does what, this mean? What are you, what are you talking about here? Uh, intent number one: Are you gonna? Do you want to play with your friends at home? Do you want to go to like a locals, like a large or small locals? Do you want to compete? Go to YCSs and Nats. Yeah. The types of decks you choose for each of those are completely different. Right. So you know, if you're a new player, maybe you shouldn't like just dump a bunch of money into Gokies or Sky Strikers or you know whatever the top meta deck that costs a couple hundred bucks is, and that's okay. Because technically, there's more decks you can play at the lower levels than you can play at the upper levels. So you get more diversity playing at, uh, at uh, smaller locals or right. just playing with your friends. Because at locals, you know, you don't necessarily have to be playing the best deck to still have fun and still compete. You can find some of the middle ground decks like Burning Abyss or, you know, Pendulums, ABCs, Dinos, and Lots do really well. Lots of different decks. But if you're playing at the upper level, you're going to be traveling, you're going to be playtesting, you are preparing for the meta. 
then you really are going to want to limit your choices to what's winning events, what has the highest chance of winning, because that's what you want to do. And you'll definitely need to be willing to drop the dollars to do so. And that's where budget comes in, and because uh, it's not mutually exclusive, because you can uh, turn a very casual deck for locals to a very expensive deck, if you, you have the budget. Bling out your mermails, your spell books, your noble knights Tunes. or something. But generally speaking, the best you know, competitive decks will be the more expensive ones. Yeah. It's fine to avoid those, but I think it's just important to make sure you know, like, what are you planning to do with this game? Like, if you're trying to pick the first deck, make sure you know where you're going to be playing, how much you're willing to spend. Because you can easily end up in a situation where uh, you can say, oh man, I really want to play Sky Strikers. You only want to play in your locals, and you don't have much of a budget. So, uh, you, you know, you get most of the core, and uh, you, got, you pulled one engage, and it's like, Oh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Maybe you can find something similar like spell books, but definitely just make sure you keep that in mind. And uh, that's a wrap, huh? Yes, that is it for this video. So these are just five tips for new people trying to pick what deck to play. Hopefully, this gave you maybe some ideas and perspective, some direction. If uh, if you have if you have any other ideas, or if you have questions, go ahead. Drop them in the comments. Yes, we'd love to hear them. And of course, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe for more Yu-Gi-Oh! Hit the notification bell. Join the squad. Yeah, they could also maybe do that by... Picking up one of these shirts in Teespring. It's down there. Yeah, so that's going to be it for the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And we will catch you in the next one. Pass turn.